Hi, I'm Steve Rose. I've been a chef for 35 years, proud owner of the greenest restaurant in the entire San Francisco Bay Area, and farmer here at Rose Ranch. We do things green around here though. What sets me apart is that green is not just a buzzword like a lot of people use. Green is an operative word and it's really easy to do. I'm gonna share with you my secrets on how to do this at home. We're gonna have fun and living green, living truly green is really a blast. I really believe that people want to learn how to live this way, they just don't know how to go about it. And that's the whole purpose of the show, is to teach people how to do that. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Welcome to the Organic Rose. Hi, Mary. Hey, Steve. Thanks for coming over today. Oh, my pleasure. Maria Carrillo High School is where we're at in Mary's Kitchen, the culinary department. Tell us about your program. Um, I'm so proud of this program. We have six full classes, but it didn't start that way. I've been here 11 years, and it started with one very small class. And about the third year I was here, we got this crazy idea that we thought, you know, we could go out into the community and cater events mm -hmm. and raise money for the program that way. That's genius. And so it started with pasta feeds at elementary schools, and now this year we've catered about 40 events, anything from weddings to nonprofits and it raises money so the students can do other things uh, like competitions. So you're able to supplement the, the city's budget and the state's budget. I think that's a great idea. And it, it takes a lot of money if you want to buy good food for the uh, students to be able to cook with. Yeah. And so that's, that's why I started doing it. And then you're able to send the students to some of the different competitions, whether that be regional or whether that be state. Tell us about Skills USA. Well, Skills USA, we've been involved in Skills USA for six years, but it's an organization that's been around for 50 years. Wow. It's a national leadership program. And when I was in school, you would call them shop classes, anything right. that was right. hands on. So, wood shop, auto shop, uh, diesel engines now, they even have CIS, and they have culinary and baking and pastry. Awesome. And so, uh, first you have to qualify at a regional level. Then if you qualify at regional level, you go to a state level. And then if you uh, get gold medals at state, you get to compete nationally. Huh, so how did our students do in the regionals? We are pretty excited <laughs> that uh, it, uh, regionals we swept here in Sonoma County for region one, which is all of Northern California. We went to San Diego to compete for the whole state of California. And that was about 20 schools involved and we swept the culinary so side. Awesome. I just get so, goosebumps every time yeah. I hear that story. So we were pretty excited that we heard Maria Creo come up three times in a row. It, it hasn't happened in eight years for any school. And they, they took the gold, the silver, and the bronze, yep. and let alone from one region, but from one school, yep. which is amazing. It's just unheard of. And so we'll be going to Louisville, Kentucky to compete at the national level, and that will be 50 contestants, because one from each state. So Louisville, Kentucky, how does your program dovetail into that? Uh, it dovetails really great because with the state curriculum that we have to teach here, uh, and then at a national level there's a curriculum, so they just marriage, they come together and marry each other very well. And so what we do here at Carrillo is we have a beginning class, advanced, and then our hospitality program. And in the beginning class, they learn all the basics, the safety, sanitation, knife skills, kitchen etiquette. And then, of course, they, they go into cooking or baking and pastry. And then for the advanced program, they're cooking full meals. They're out uh, catering in the community. Uh, they're cooking at home, doing reports. And those are the students that are going to go on to skills. And then in the hospitality program, those are also the advanced students, and they're the ones who are going to probably work in the field. Many of them have jobs in the culinary programs around the county already. And so they're not just in a classroom cooking like what maybe we had in high school, which was home right, ec. Right, right. And that's what people are thinking of. It's home ec. When we go out in the community, they think it's a professional catering company. And I, that's what I want. I kind of think that they've signed up for your program because they can eat well. They do eat <laughs> well. I, I do have a lot of students <laughs> that... Uh, uh, you know, they just want to be able to cook for themselves. Yeah. And then I have the students that they thought they just want to cook for themselves when they come into the program, and then they develop a passion for it. And then I have these great stories of them coming to me get, um, saying, guess what, I'm going to the JC, I'm going to Johnson & Wales, I'm going to the CIA. We have a young man going to Cal Poly for food science. He never thought he would do anything like that. So those are the stories that just get me so excited that they found something that they're passionate about. Well, and then plus, they, you're teaching them these skills that 
in fact, can, they can get jobs while they're going to college Absolutely. to support themselves as, as they're away to school. Yes, and you can always have a have job in, in the culinary field. They can be front of the house, back of the house. Yeah. And if their parents are sending me thank you cards, like, thank God they have a job. And because it's true, they, they need that. And so they get those real world experiences. <laughs> so, so we're getting ready for the competition at uh, Skills USA, and we're working with the students, just polishing their knife skills. And soon you'll see them breaking down some dead chickens, and then they're going to go ahead and create what's called an airline breast, which is um, old school. And you guys, I've told you that that's. When they used to feed people on the airplane, they would always serve an airline breast. And an airline breast is a chicken, half of a chicken that's been boned out with the first uh, wing joint still attached to it. So they are going to uh, break the chicken down as well and then go ahead and braise it. And you're gonna do pan sauce, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chef, yes. Why, why do we use the um, extra ends of the vegetables for the stock? So, so we're not, so it, it's gonna impart flavor to it but it's also showing that you're not, there's no waste in the kitchen. Oh, okay. So what you're, what you're in a commercial kitchen, a lot of times your profit margin is in the garbage and you don't want that. It's hard enough as it is to make a living in the restaurant business. So um, using this, using all the vegetable ends and everything is just perfect and it's gonna give you a really nice stock. Just making, making the most of your food. Exactly, exactly. And then when you break down the chicken, that's gonna go in there as well. You've already done that with some of the chicken. We're gonna go ahead and add some more chicken to that just to intensify the chicken flavor. Okay. Well, that looks really good. Steve, what yes. are we gonna be doing with the potatoes? Peeling them. I think we'll peel them and dice them, maybe like a, like a medium-sized dice, about like that. Okay. Okay. And then I think it might be kind of nice to go ahead and use those. What if we go ahead and cook them, cook the diced potatoes, blanch them off in the stock, okay. and then shock them, and then use those as part of your salad component. That would be good. Yeah, just like toss them with just a really light vinaigrette. I think that would work out really nice. That's what's been really fun too with all of you is that, is, come over here, is that <clears throat> you've been through this whole process have been so creative and coming up with different, uh, just different ideas, whether they be a different ethnic slant on the dishes that you're creating, what have you, I mean, it's, it's been really good. And like, like you know, all of you know, is that being a chef, being in a commercial kitchen like you are right now, it's a lot of it's thinking on your feet. Yeah, you know, and you've all been really good at that. I noticed that for sure in Skills USA, like during the competition a lot. Because things don't, sometimes things don't happen like, the, like yeah. you wish they would happen, right? And all of a sudden you've got it, yep. All of a sudden the ice cream maker doesn't work and you're all set to make ice cream and then you just switch it out and now, oh, it's custard, right? Ice cream is custard. Yeah. So hell, I'll just go ahead and put that custard in the oven and bake it off and then there you go. But it's like thinking on your feet. Why don't you go ahead and cut some of these, like this, this stack on the bias, just to give it a little bit, a little different shape. There uh, was an incident, um, uh, uh, where I was finished with my chicken cuts and um, I was cleaning off my station and uh, put it in the uh, fridge to keep it cool, uh, to keep it out of the danger zone. And um, the What's rack that? was not stable inside the fridge. I already have some in there. So when I put the tray of the, chick of the raw chicken cuts on the, the rack and I closed the door, the rack collapsed. And miraculously, <laughs> the rack, I mean, the, the chicken stayed upright so it did not fall over and contaminate, which would have taken me out of the competition because I would have had to start over with all of my, uh, all of my knife cuts. So uh, that's referred to as the Skills USA chicken miracle? Yeah. It, <laughs> I could not have been any more lucky. So. Huh. And none of the chefs saw it, huh? Uh, I think one of, them, one of them did, and he was laughing pretty hard at my... Because <laughs> he noticed that it's just stayed up. Yeah. That's hilarious. Oh, I remember seeing that. That was crazy. Who was it? Tell them about um, the, when one of the chefs, when they were doing all the scoring and the judging, and they walked up to one of the other, not one of you guys, but one of the other students in the competition and said, how did you make your chicken stock taste so much like bouillon? Oh, yeah. That, he, yeah he told us that one of the stocks say, tasted like exactly like a, they had put a bouillon cube in. And he was like, afterwards, he was really 
questioning us like I'm really confused how you guys can do that in only like an hour of <laughs> stock boiling. <laughs> That's too yeah. funny. It was funny. Because we joked about that. Oh, yeah, smuggle some bouillon cubes yeah. <laughs> in your knife set, right? And somebody actually did that. I'm glad it wasn't you guys. And he probably took a bunch of points off, too, I would think. Yeah, he told us that he did. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. What are you planning to do after your high school graduation? Um, I plan to attend the JC in the fall, and I am going to be majoring in English, but also I will be taking classes in culinary, so even though I won't be choosing it as my official um, career pathway, I definitely will have that um, culinary side to me and continuing on throughout my years before I transfer to four years. So. Um, one thing I just love about working with Mary is that you're always learning something new every day. Um, been here for four years, I thought I would know everything at the end of the two years, but no, there's always something to learn. Um, and probably the biggest thing that you have to learn from Mary's class is hustle um, and to always be on your, always be working because there's always something to do in the kitchen, whether it's cleaning um, or uh, chopping or doing prep work for a future catering. So it's been a big help for me in um, the work um, business, um, especially with the restaurants that I've been working at, at the uh, Hilton, um, at the Nectar restaurant. Just everything translates into the real life, and it's taught me a lot of things. So, so gentlemen, why don't you both uh, grab a chicken? Okay. And you know, part of the uh, competition that we, you know, really have to get the time down because we don't want to waste any of the yeah. time is breaking down this chicken and and having it ready to go. So, why, Phillips, why don't you talk about you know what right. we've learned? Yeah. First, you gotta buy gloves. You gotta always stay clean. Next. Um, got a really sharp knife because when it's raw chicken, it's, it can be really hard to cut through. So what we usually do is go back to the to this side of the chicken and you see all this fat right here, you want to cut that off. And the fat can be used for the uh, saute pan, it can be used as a good um, uh, oil, gives it a lot more flavor when you're searing the chicken. It's called schmaltz in Yiddish. Schmaltz. Schmaltz. Also, they call that in German too. Do they really? Schmaltz. Yeah. <laughs> and do these chickens have any giblets in them? Yeah, so sometimes we don't have the giblets. The the giblets. So this is the neck. That can be really good for the stock or the pan sauce. Do you use the do you use the giblets for your sauce or do you use it for your stock? I use it for the um, the sauce because I like the flavor that the heart adds and the kidneys. Yeah. I think that's why we got. Do you have a neck in yours too or not? Uh yes, right here. Why don't you go ahead and put them in here and then I'll go ahead and uh, drop them in the stock pot. All right. Yeah, so it looks like these don't have any other chickens. So the next thing I do, uh, since we're only really cutting half the chicken, is to uh, cut off the wing. Um, so there's like a little part of uh, bone here. It's the narrowest part. Um, and you cut the fat around it. And you just kind of keep sawing off. Uh, make sure you're cutting away from you instead of towards you. There you go. This is the hazard of cutting yourself. And just one more time, tell us what cut you're doing for the competition that you're starting with right now. Oh, uh, we are doing the wing? Or the, air, the, the airline. The airline. Oh, we are doing the uh, airline breast, which is the chicken breast, including the uh, bone that comes from the base of the wing. Very nice. When we first learned how to cut up chickens in class, did you guys ever think of the class? Do you remember when we cut them up in class? I remember it used to take me like 20 minutes. Yes. Huh. And it didn't look like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Once most of you got done, I couldn't tell what parts were which, but it got better. And since we're only just doing half, uh, you got to make sure to, uh, when you're doing the airline breast, to emphasize that you have the bone right there, so it's good to peel back some of the uh, excess fat to show that you do have the bone there. Everything's intact. There's no cuts in the bone uh, because every point uh, counts in the competition. So that whole airline breast has to be pretty much intact, skin on, correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, then the next part is the leg where you cut through the fat part. It's kind of like the chicken, the chicken's going to tell you where to cut. Yeah, it gives, it, it just gives Exactly, exactly. The fat yep. That's the easiest part to cut through because there's usually just cartilage connecting it there instead of trying to saw through the bones. Very nice. And then the best part with the uh, leg and the thigh is that there's this white line of fat, which is the perfect map spot to separate the bone, uh, the chicken leg from the thigh. You've taught these guys well. Uh, yeah. 
Huh. The chicken tells you where it wants to be cut up. Yeah. Good job, you guys. So then probably the hardest part I would say for cutting up the chicken is deboning the thigh. Just and this again uh, was part of the rules of the competition. So in any competition that we go to, we have to follow what they're asked to do. So it's great that these two have learned so many different ways to, to cut up a chicken so they have different pieces that they can prep and cook. And you have, remember, you've got saute pans heating up behind us as well. So when, when you guys were down in San Diego, what was the hardest part during the competition? Because I could not be in the kitchen with you, which was the hardest part for me. The hardest part by far was the uh, induction burners. Um, yeah, because the entire time we've been practicing here with uh, burners, so you can tell the level of heat that you're given. Yeah, the gas. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. you can see the flame. And with the induction burner, like you can put your hand on it, and it will not burn you at all because it uh, conducts heat through the metal. Um, so it was practically impossible to tell how hot it was. It just gave you a number scale from uh, 1 to 20, and that was very difficult. And how did you like only having one burner? I hate it. <laughs> you, have, you have to use your time wisely. Um, and yeah, that was a challenge. That was extremely challenge. difficult. I think that was probably, I'm sure that was on purpose. Well, it was just the way they operate at the yeah. Culinary Institute there. But uh, that was a huge challenge. And so many of the students, uh, their timing was off because it was a lot to have to do with timing. And, and our students had notes. Uh, they had practice with only one burner, even though it was just gas, not induction. So at least they, they challenged themselves to do that because I think a lot of the students were practicing with their whole stove. Well, that's, it's so different once you Right, well, it's almost like having to, to work with one hand tied behind mm -hmm. your back, right? Absolutely, yeah. and, and it is so different. And having 20 people in the kitchen and, you know, trying to focus. So yeah, got the chicken breast right here, got the skin intact, nice. and then the airline breast right here. And then turn it over, what, what are you going to pull off the back here? I'm going to pull off the uh, chicken tender, which could be used for um, a garnish for the soup, for the other uh, menu items, because that requires a chicken garnish. And got a little meat left on that could be, could have been taken off. So that's what they're going to look at too. They're going to look at, you know, how much of the meat you've gotten off the carcass. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, one of the great things about having Steve here was that the students are really concentrating on not wasting anything. Because when he talks about that that's money, that these students ha did not waste one thing at the competition. And we saw a lot of the students wasting and, and uh, not caring about the ingredients. But They've been really taught to respect all the ingredients, no matter uh, if it's parsley or a steak, that they have to make sure that they know that costs money. And, and yours is still a little bit frozen, but you're yeah. doing a great job. So would you like me to cut the other part or just leave it? Why don't we just leave that, leave that Yeah, let's now. go ahead and season, get your airline breast ready to go in the pan. Okay. And let's get that nicely seared. And then I think I'm going to move away so that the two of you have more room at the stove. It's kind of yeah. Tight. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to watch from over at the corner. So kosher salt? You, you two have these. Uh, yes. Yeah. And um, I, keep nice it in, I keep the seasoning in separate cups because uh, at state you have to really emphasize uh, by preventing cross-contamination, you have to really emphasize your, your safety and sanitation. So um, this stuff with the boxes and the containers right here, if I used the glove with a lot of chicken on it, it will completely contaminate the container itself and waste a lot of money because you, now you would have to toss it. So. Um, just to avoid all of that, I just simply just use a separate cup that, I, that is disposable, and you will not have to worry about contaminating anything, any of the containers. And you saw that happen actually a little bit at, at this at, in, in San Diego, right? I mean, there was some of that contamination going on for students that didn't didn't really know. Yeah, and um, some people with their uh, with their station, they had the chicken and the vegetables on the same exact side of the table. And, and I was just dying. Because huh. I was behind a glass, uh -huh. and they couldn't hear me. Um, they weren't looking at me. And to see some of the other students that weren't my students, I didn't know their name. They're just numbers down there. They're just numbers. Yeah. And I just, want, as a teacher, just wanting to go in saying you're going to poison somebody was yeah. just nerve-wracking. There you go. 
Yeah. I'll bet. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move out of the way because otherwise you're not gonna be able to use the stove here. Okay. And the stock's looking good. Mix are you using? Uh, I'm using uh, half uh, olive oil and half uh, vegetable oil. Okay. Um, keeps it nice and hard. So kind of 50-50? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, we're going to get ready to put those chickens in here. Pat. Whoa! Oh, yeah, good idea. All right, so we hot enough, so now the fun part. Oh, sorry. And then go ahead and drop it in. All right. Go back one more time. Wait, what? <laughs> Away. Yeah, okay. What did you learn from Steve from these weeks of him coming? What's the one thing that was most important? Um, being able to multitask, um, because prior I did not, um, I would always cook my chicken first and then do my pan sauce afterwards, which ate up a lot of time and I didn't finish on time last year. So this year he taught me to uh, saute my vegetables, and get my sauce started while my chicken was cooking. So that way once my chicken was done, all I had to do was just reduce it further. And it really did help me a lot. So, so flooring. What would you say? Probably leave the covers benefit? off so we can get some more footage on the GoPro. Um, I think he always just added a lot of creativity to my dishes, and uh, I think with the plating, he helped me a lot. I'm just trying out new ideas and always just seeing what works best. And also, a major thing was the whole waste thing that you can really use any, every, and any part of the yep. vegetable yep. for a certain aspect of the dish. That was really important. Yeah, that was awesome. awesome. You guys learned really well, and it's been, it's been just, it's just been an honor to work with with the students and and with you, of course. Oh, it's been great. I've learned. Some, I'm stealing all of your ideas. And <laughs> go for it. That I I thought of them. So. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Beautiful. And um, Florence is much darker than mine. That's where I want to get my color at. Um, so usually you can judge the color of the sauce by searing it off as well as you can. Um, but right here, what I can do is, towards the end, I can actually kind of get it a little darker by making it as reduced as possible, and then I can bring the color back by adding more stock. Good job. What I did a little bit, I cooked the onions, I think, a little bit longer, and I think that added to the darker color. Yeah. There's something you can use any of the giblets, or can I go for it? Oh, go for it, all your... And you know what set you guys apart, too, was that you knew exactly what the game plan was and how you were going to play all the plating was different. Yours was absolutely beautiful. And some of the students were figuring it out as they went. But I was really proud that you guys had a plan. You stuck to the plan. You didn't waver. And uh, it, it just, first, second, and third. Well, that's what, that, yeah. You can't get much better than that. Yeah. Goosebumps, once again. You know what the Hawaiians call goosebumps? Chicken skin. Speaking of chicken. So, Again, Mary, thank you so much for including me in part thank of your you. program, and, and hopefully you'll put up with me in the future, and, and we'll just work together as a team with these students, and they're amazing. They're the best in the state, and now they're going to be the best in the country. So. Yeah, and we're, we're missing a couple of the students that were part of our team. Oh, that one six-foot-five guy yes. with the four, well, size 14 he shoes? He didn't fit in the, in the <laughs> shoes, but uh, this was the team that I took to San Diego. They made me very proud the way that they supported each other, they cooked together, they played together, <laughs> <laughs> they left San Diego in one piece, almost. <laughs> uh, but it was awesome to have all of them supporting each other and we just really want to congratulate, congratulate Harrison and uh, you know, give him a really good send off. Well done. You're gonna do great. <laughs>